What is up everyone, this is Jake here with another video, and as you can tell, the format's a little different for this video. And that's because the Rona got me again, and I just don't feel like setting up the camera. The clam flu! It's spinning! So we're gonna do just a simple overhead view, no real intro, no real outro, we're just gonna keep it simple, and you know, as they say, keep it simple stupid. That's what we're doing, so, but today is Upcrate, oh yeah. Every Upcrate so far has been stupendous. Love the color choice, the purple and the orange. Excellent color choices. They got the little pull tabs on here for me. That's always excellent. So we're going to go ahead and crack this bad boy open and get started on this unboxing. This is for May of 2022. Um, but before we do, as usual, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, uh, be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the box, if I was misusing a product, if you think you're going to get it, or you know, if I helped you out deciding. Because that's what I'm here for, you know. I like to blow my hard-earned cash so you don't have to. Also, if you want to see more of my art, you can check it out on Instagram. That's at Brown Jakins. That's B-R-O-W-N-J-A-K-E-N-S. Or if you want to shop for some of my products, I have t-shirts, I have stickers, I have art prints, I have comic books, all on my Etsy store. So search Doomsayer Designs on Etsy and you will find it. Link is in the description below. I will quit self-promoting. Let's get started. All right, I actually forgot I can still kind of use the banana cutter. Actually, I've lost the banana cutter. Well, never mind. I haven't used it in so long because the upgrade boxes don't require it. I say that now, and I need it. There we go. All right, let's get started with this bad boy. I'm excited. All right, every every up box so far, not to ruin it, has been awesome. Up box. Un I read that unbox up crate. Sorry, every up crate has been awesome so far that I've had. Oh, those stickers are great. Wonder if they're transparent too. They're not. They're solid vinyl. That art is awesome. Man, that's great. Tantani, that's awesome. That is really, really good. I love that. Okay, I'm going to not read the book first. I'm going to open the products because the books have the products in there and I don't want to ruin it. Oh, well, I know I'm getting some water. Oh, look at that art print. Oh, that's so good. Man, that is excellent. Yeah, she is a watercolorist extraordinaire. And look at those uh, kind of provocative horns there. Sham Pagan. Man, this is, she's really good. Yeah, that's really good, man. I like that a lot. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. Guys, guys, you know the watercolor kick I've been on. If this is watercolor, oh, ah, I hope it's good watercolors I can use. Let's go ahead and open this up, though. Huzzah, it's Van Gogh paints. Hell yeah, so we're just talking about how good they are. Excellent. <laughs> I got Van Gogh watercolors, man, for the little, uh, actually, it's sitting right here beside me, my little travel palette. Yes! Oh, this is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna get all this opened up and then we will be right back. That's so cool. Oh, that's excellent. Look at this. Y'all, I'm so stoked for this. I'm so excited for this. I didn't realize they had little water cakes inside this. I thought it was just a little, uh, like a palette. No, it's got water cakes in it too. Ah, I don't know what Scrim is, but it's right up my alley. The aesthetic is so cool. All right, let's go ahead and flip through here and see what we got going on. I know their price went up. I don't know if it was this box or the next box. I'll have to check and see how much they charge me. Typically, they're $25 shipped. I mean, if they're still under $30 bucks shipped, it can't be that big of a deal, to be honest, because every value has been really high. So let's see here. So the first thing we have is Scrim Watercolor Dots. That's an awesome logo, too. Very old school 80s heavy metal look. But we have script watercolor dots, and uh, they come in Cosmic Wave, Ray Gold, Moon Dust, Osiris Red, and Atlantis. All very cool names. Those are small dots. Then we have Huge Dots, which are Pacific Blue and Deep Orange. Dude. Dude. That is so cool. I like the way they do it. They just kind of stick them on there. And it's like on a tongue. That's really neat. Let's see. Then we have... Let's see what else we got here. Oh, just going over the scrim stuff. Oh, and that's a... Is that a scrim brush, too? No, but they gave me the brush with it, though. The brush looks great, though. That's a really cool design on that brush. Like the little... Um, See the little metal rings? That's pretty damn cool. Yeah, that's cool. That brush looks nice. I mean, it might be absolute shit. I don't know. I'm just saying it looks nice. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the rest of the bottle post. I think I've already said battle post once, but whatever. Then we have the watercolor half pans, which are the Van Gogh. And Van Gogh, so far, I got a few of the tubes from, uh, I think it was one of the uh, upgrade boxes. And the Van Gogh paint is on another level. Like, I really love this Winsor Newton stuff, but the Van Gogh paint is unbelievably good. Uh, the fact I got two of these half pans is excellent because they're going to go right in here if they fit. I'm assuming they will. Um, then we have the Lavis Fave, Lavis Fave brush. I don't know. 100R00. I don't know. But it looks really cool. I think it's good. Like I said, I really do like the design. I think that looks really, really good. Um, looks very uh, classy. You know, you know how I like my brushes. I like them classy. Then we have 
Oh, cool, it's got the little push button on the side. Superb. I've never seen one like that. Usually just squeeze the uh, the cylinder. Oh, and it even has a, a suction. Oh, okay, that's great. So yeah, you just drop it in water, you pull, you suck it up, and then you squeeze. That's really good. That's what she said. <laughs> that's like a very high-tech watercolor brush. I like this. A water tank brush, I should say. And then we have drawing inks. I've not used the Winsor Newton drawing inks before, but I love Winsor Newton and I love inks. So I'm really excited to use these. And it looks like it's in an orange color, 965 orange. Yeah, this box has to be worth more than 30 bucks. That has to be. That's what she said. And then we have uh, three sheets inside your box. That's what she said. 56.99 for 20 sheets. Okay, wow. And we got three sheets. So that's a pretty good deal. This feels really good too. Is this hot press or cold press? What is this? Um, ST Cuthbert's Mill Sanders Waterford watercolor paper. It doesn't say whether it's hot press or cold press, which I don't know, maybe is there some that isn't? Either one? Yeah, it feels really good though. Like it's got, see, I've learned that I like watercolor paper that has a bit of a texture, but doesn't interfere with the flow of a good line. You know what I mean? I don't like the lines to feather out and stuff because I like to do a lot of precision and stuff in it. But um, I also like that, that toothy grip sometimes. That's what she said. Man, once again, I can't express enough how much I love these bottle post books. And they go on and on. Like, look at this. Look at all the art they put in here by this uh, Tintani. Or Tan Tintani? Tintani? I don't know. But she's a fantastic artist. They even give tips about using the materials. And she used all the materials to make this art, which is superb. So, yeah, that's great. She gives tips. Man! Once again, upgrade before I've even used the box, they've knocked it out of the park. I love it. I don't I don't know if I'll ever cancel them. Now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying it and risking it because they've been they've become my favorite box. Upgrade has become my absolute favorite art box. So yeah, I know I probably just killed it by saying that. But anyways, who cares? I'm gonna go ahead and test these products out and see what I think. I learned a super good little trick from some of my subscribers. You write the name down here. All right, let's try to suck up this water here. I'm just gonna drop it in here. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. You can fill it by holding the tip into the water and squeezing the handle. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, cool. So I'm doing all this extra work for nothing. Is it Japanese? Because it has that thing where it screws on in reverse. Is that is that a European thing too? Because I know Japanese pins and stuff, um, they screw on the opposite direction for me. I'm used to things screwing on clockwise. And uh, it seems like Japanese pins and stuff, they screw, they screw on counterclockwise and unscrew clockwise. So is that just a, let me know in the comments though, if that's a, uh, if that's a European thing or if that is uh, just a Japanese thing. That's what if you say. That's what she said. One more time. I'm going to pop you. Hold on. Let's figure this out. Okay. So I squirted the water out. I'm going to hold this in and then pull up. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. You got to hold it down the water. Okay. I don't know how to work this. What the hell? Okay, so you put it in there, you pull this back, and you hold it, and it will slowly fill up the reservoir. I don't think it gets it all the way full. So, oh, and this will, okay, and this releases some of the air. Oh, that is super neat. Okay, so check it out. Once you get it full like this, uh, it puts more pressure on this uh, bulb down here, and where it has so much pressure built up, when you press this down, it releases some of that pressure and pushes the water out. Oh, and it's very touchy. That's really good. Yeah, this is really cool. It said it's, uh, it's nothing like you've ever seen uh, on the uh, watercolor brush market, which I, it's true, I've never seen anything like this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dry this off. I don't waste paper towels, y'all. I've been using this for days, it's fine. Don't judge me on that shit. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use this brush first, because this brush seems really interesting to me. I like this a lot. Break that newness off there. It's very new, geez, it's like stuck. The only issue I've really ever had with wooden brushes is that they sometimes, the wood starts to split. Ooh, that's, a, that's really gunky. I mean, that's good though. I mean, that means they've nice and protected it. And watch this really good because it's still kind of like sticky and slimy. So yeah, another tip on this, make sure to wash this brush really well because I think it'll it'll screw up the paint otherwise, or at least your painting. So let's go with this, uh, get it nice and wet, get this Indian yellow on the paper. I'm going to go real good and saturated. Oh, that looks so good. Man, I'm telling you, dude, Van Gogh paints, I, I, I don't know much about watercolor. I'm just starting to learn about them. But Van Gogh paints have been top notch for me lately. You blend that out. Just every color is so saturated. It's so just intense, all the colors. Look how good that blends out. That's just, and that's, I'm not having re-dipped water or anything. That's one stroke. That's one brush load of water right there. I mean, you can't ask for a better transition than that. Look how good that is. That's, that's incredible. God, that paint's so good. Let's go ahead and try the... Carmine here. Uh, they gave me some great skin tones. I can really do something cool with this, I think. I'm excited to make a piece. Let's go a little bit more intense on this. I want to really blend it in there. God, that looks good. 
And see, I do like this paper though too, because like I said, it's it doesn't really cause much feathering because the texture is not super uh, coarse, but it does allow for some good smooth lines and it does show some texture through, which is good. A little bit of best of both worlds, I like that. And that texture showing through in that red really makes it for me. That's great. Gosh, that's great. That fade, man, that, that gradient right there is so great. Can't go wrong with these, I don't think. Okay, I'm gonna try one more here. I'm gonna blend this yellow into this red, and then I'm gonna try these other colors over on the other side. I do have a random hair on this brush, though. I have to get this off there. Yeah, this did come with one bad hair. Like, you see that? Oh, I love the can or not. There's a really weird, crazy hair there. Pull that out. We're good. Pull, popped right out. Okay, so now let's go this way and see how they blend. That looks good. It's a good little, like, fire effect there. I like that. Oh yeah, that's great. That's awesome. These uh, these Van Gogh colors are top notch. They have my approval so far. Okay, so now we're gonna try these watercolor dots here, and I'm gonna go to the colors. These are the Scrim, which I kept seeing in a Skyrim, because that's well, it's one letter from Skyrim, and I love. Sky I've been watching Skyrim videos for days. I'm gonna start playing that game again. It's been a long time. In the small dots, we have Cosmic Wave, Raw Gold. I said Ray Gold earlier. Sorry, that's Raw Gold. Moon Dust. Osiris Red and Atlantis. So this is Cosmic Wave. What a unique color. Man, it's gonna dry with a sheen and I can't wait to see what it looks like. So it looks like it's a dark jade when it's dry, but then when you put it on here, it almost looks gray. But I'm hoping it kind of dries with a, uh, with like a, oh, it's going to, man. I don't know if you can see that on the camera yet. You might have to wait till it dries, but it's got like a green shimmer to it and it looks incredible. Wow, wow, wow. That looks really, really good. Okay, so let's try the, uh, the raw gold right here. I can't really say it because my nose is so stuffed up. It's raw, like, you know, the ancient Egyptian god raw, god of the sun. I keep saying raw. I'm also a hick, so that doesn't help. Cubans don't know words that well. Mm. All right, Dan. Yeah, these are going to be fun, man. I'm telling you right now, these are going to be awesome. Um, They're very transparent, I've noticed, which isn't a bad thing because these aren't. So I think I'll be getting some good stuff out of these. That was the raw gold. Now let's try the moon dust, which is kind of the purpley color, which I guess is this. I love that they're just little dots on paper, man. Someone, uh, Subscriber sent me some of those the other day, and it was they're awesome. I had a blast with those. Yeah, I like that. I like all these colors. They're very muted, but very good. Like I like the colors that are because they don't look near as bright as they are on the, the dot here, which is a good thing though, because I really enjoy that. Okay, so we got Osiris Red, which I'm assuming is the red. Nope, that's the one I just dipped into, right? I'm confused here. Okay, I'm stupid. Hold on, I'm gonna write these down as I go. The Van Gogh Indian Yellow. This is the Van Gogh Carmine. And then this one is Cosmic Wave. Let me try to be organized, isn't it cute? Raw gold. And then, I don't know what this one is. This is the red one. So this is Osiris Red, okay. Okay, this looks, I'm sorry, this handwriting is terrible, but it's hard to write on this textured paper with this kind of brush tip pen. The next color is, we're gonna find Moon Dust. Moon Dust, I think, is this one. It's not the green one. Cool God. I'm telling you, this color, just from looking at it on the palette here, I don't know if you can tell on the webcam, but it looks incredible. And it does look incredible. Wow, my God, that looks great. Yeah, these are all very sparkly and iridescent, awesome colors. So I'm excited to see what these look like draw. Okay, so that's Moon Dust. And then this will be Atlantis, this last one here. Yeah, most of the, uh, I don't think they're meant to be very saturated. They're meant to be kind of transparent and just shimmery. So I'm assuming this will be like a final coat type thing. Uh, just mainly for some, like they would be great for like a fish scale or something, which I guess that's why the uh, Tontani or whatever her name was, uh, did fishes because man that, that would make for a great fish color those look awesome wow all right so this was the atlantis okay so now let's try the other two which is the pacific blue and the deep orange oh these are just straight up colors these aren't the iridescent kind these are cool as shit look at that oh yeah i like that a lot these seem to uh, soak up the water a lot quicker too god look at that orange ah look at that orange oh that's good stuff yeah, those are all really, 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 really good. So I hope this color swatch kind of helped because I've never really done one before, but it makes sense to. I've never claimed to be a good YouTuber. You guys just assume I am, which is, well, folly on your part. We have one thing left to test, and that is this ink, and I'm pretty excited for the ink. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, I'm going to, I don't think it really needs shook up, but I'm going to shake it a little bit. Oops, I'm spilled out because I decided to unscrew the lid and then shake it because I'm an idiot. Oh, well, I noticed I didn't even use this brush. Huh. Yeah, buddy, look at that. God, those Windsor Newton ink. I'm gonna have to get some of these drawing inks because I don't have any of them. Uh, I think the only, I think I do have a white one, and I think that was from an earlier box. But other than that, I don't have any. I can't really draw much with white. I'm gonna try this little glass dip pen I have here in this drawing ink and see how it draws. Oh wow, wow, you guys, drawing inks are something else. Of course, a little goblin face. It's what I always draw. 
I'm definitely going to be drawing a face with this of some sort. I don't know what, but uh, there's a lot of colors here to make really neat flesh tones. So I'm excited for that. Oh yeah, this is great. Man, this this drawing ink is superb. Um, yeah, so I, listen, I am absolutely loving this so far. I think this box is incredible and I haven't even drawn anything with it. So I'm going to quit yammering on about how much I love it. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a piece with it and go over the prices and go over what I did to make the piece and whether I liked it or not. So I'll be right back. So for this piece, as usual, I started off with the handy dandy 2mm lead holder. I sketched out my subject, which was inspired by the one color Atlantis, and it is Mermaid Man from Spongebob. But much more of like a my style kind of superhero-y mermaid man. A younger mermaid man, back when he was muscular and he wasn't old. But after I got the sketch laid out, I used the glass dip pen to outline everything with the orange drawing ink. That was one of the suggestions made in the book uh, by the featured artist. She said that if you laid your lines down with the ink instead of a pencil, you could erase the pencil away really well and still have the ink laying there because the ink wasn't water soluble. Now I know there were spots when I was coloring this that the ink did seem to spread a little bit, but that could have been because it was laying on top of graphite, so I'm not really sure. But for the most part, it was really good as an underbase. After that, I started doing my skin tones, as I've learned them from Scott Christian Sava. Uh, do a yellow base, and then you do red over that to make it a little bit darker, then take purple and put it over top of it. And for some reason, it works so well. Like, I've, I've been blown away by how, I, I never in a million years would I have thought to do yellow, red, and purple until I was showed to do that. Then I was like, oh my god, that makes perfect sense. Because even when you start it out, it doesn't look right for skin tones. Like, for a Caucasian skin tone to go yellow, red, and then purple. It's so weird. But I love it. I think it looks really good. Another reason I chose Mermaid Man is because I really want to use that orange a lot more and his suit is predominantly orange so I get to paint a lot of that orange on there. So I did the majority of his suit with just that flat orange. I diluted it a little bit with water and then I went back and took that same orange and I was trying to think of a good color that would contrast it well so I took some of the purple I'd made for my shadows and mixed it with the orange and it gave it almost like an orangish brown. A good color to shadow with. I thought the shadowing on the suit turned out really well. I really liked that a lot. And it had the piece pretty much finished. I didn't really use any color pencils or anything on it but I really did want to put my black outlining and my white highlights on it because I really enjoyed the piece so I have it finished with just the products in the box and then I went ahead and used a few of my own products to, to finish it up because you know it's my style I really like it that way and I will say that the paper was really great it did specifically say on the front of the package that it was cold pressed water paper I just completely missed that so yes this is cold pressed water paper but it actually is very the texture is really good like it's a great texture but it's not very obstructive so I really enjoyed the paper quite a bit it didn't curl very much when I blow dried it, it was it was awesome. I liked it. So now let's get to the part that everyone wants to know: was it worth it? So up crate values this box at thirty nine dollars and seventy five cents. It's at thirty seven euros, but in U S dollars it's thirty nine dollars and seventy five cents. The actual retail price of this box in U S dollars is forty four dollars and forty nine cents. Yowza! Once again, they absolutely kill it on the value. So for full disclosure, there's a couple items I just had to take their word for it on. The paper, I couldn't really find a price on it because they said it was a 20 pack for 56.99 euros. And I just basically took that, divided it by 20 and, you know, used it three times. So that's how I get the price of the paper. And then another really cool thing, those Scrim watercolors is an incredibly small company. And when I say incredibly small, the only place I could find their stuff is on Etsy. They didn't have a website to go buy from. They had a Facebook page with like 220 followers. They are incredibly small. And to me, that really says something about Upcrate that they're gonna go and try to support these very small companies. They even did an interview with people they got the Scrim watercolors from. And the people said that, hey, you know, we wanted to do this for two main reasons. We wanted to make really unique colors. And we also wanted to make some colors that were environmentally friendly. And that's great. And just think that the Upcrate could have made more money by, by saving money, by not buying a small company who couldn't afford to make them cheaper because you know they're a small company but they didn't they, they use this small company they help promote them they use their fantastic product those watercolor dots were awesome I used them a lot on the uh, the background to add textures and a bit on the hair to add some glistening to it I painted over the uh, the bikini top to add some glistening to it it was awesome man those little those little watercolor cakes were really really good I was very impressed with them and this is from like a very small time company so bravo to Upgrade for doing this. Not only do they give you a killer box with a killer value, $44.49 is what this is worth, and that is bananas good. That is a, such a good value, it's ridiculous. Not only do they give you an awesome, awesome value, but they do it in the right way. Like, I swear to God, I don't know how they're making money on these because they have such a good value. The, the products cost so much. The only thing I can assume is that maybe the products are just 
priced slightly differently in Europe. The value is good by Euro standards anyways, because it's $39.75 for a $30 box. Well, there was also a price increase rate sheet uh, in the box that came with, and it said it was three euros is what our shipping increased by in the US, which is like $3.30. So still, that's only $28. It's still less than 30 bucks for this box. And the box is still really damn good. So I will gladly pay $30, $28, whatever, for a $44.49 box. So I will quit rambling on, but once again, Upcrate has killed it. This is the best company to buy an art box from. And until they prove me wrong, I'm going to keep saying it. Upcrate is the best box. I don't care what anyone says all around when it comes to value, product quality, and just integrity. Like they are my absolute favorite company. So thank you so much, Upcrate. I do really appreciate this. You guys are awesome and keep being awesome. And like I said, there's not really gonna be an outro with this video. So as usual, be sure to like and be sure to subscribe. Make sure to let me know what you thought about the piece and what you thought about the box. And if you think about subscribing to Upcrate, I would highly suggest it though. But thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it and keep on drawing on. Later.